So we're on vacation today up in New England, and we're up here at Kurt's Hobby Garage, which is this little structure that he just finished building. And we have Kurt here to walk you through this stuff a little bit. This is his flatbed, and this is Kurt. How you doing? Come on over and I'll show you some of my pickings. Um, I'm big into anything that's transportation or antique-ish motor driven. This is something I picked up out of a scrapyard. It's a 1926 cement mixer with a hit and miss engine. The way a hit and miss engine works is that the big flywheel inside the engine runs it for three strokes and then on the fourth stroke it fires and then it'll go three strokes again and fire again so this is what they used to use in the olden days uh, before giant cement mixer trucks and if you can tell by the vintage it's it's very vintage it's a lot easier than shoveling by hand and mixing oh absolutely and the site is actually on an old farm so I collected some antique farm equipment that was horse driven. Um, this farm was uh, goes back to the 1700s, so I've collected different stuff from different eras. But my actual goal here is I have a, an amusement park ride train that I'm going to go around the gas station. So my wife and I call it my wife calls it the chicken coop. I call it the train station gas station. <laughs> so it's a little bit of humor there. So part, doing part of the farm theme, I actually have been given, I've been very lucky, the old farmers have given me some old farm all tractors and they gave me an old international bulldozer. These were both freebies that didn't run when I got them and they spend a little time in an old gas engine you can get running. Walking over to the gas station slash train station. I made this during the winter time. We started in January when it was like six degrees below zero. And it took me most of the summer to almost finish it. It's not quite done yet, but it's it's coming. So I really like old vending machines and I like you know, weird stuff like this. Um this was given to me. What is that? That is a uh uh for a four way intersection. One set's red, the other set's yellow. And uh, where I live, the yellow is warning, the red is stop. Then I was fortunate enough to pick out of the junkyard again a 1940s tire machine. And part of it's air driven and part of it's hand. So you would break the bottom bead with power, and the top bead you break by hand. And these big bars, you twist the bead off the rim. So to me, it took a lot of this, which I don't have anymore. <laughs> and this I've had for a really long time. Uh, it's probably from the late 40s, early 50s gas station when gas was 29 cents a gallon. I don't know if you can remember that or not, but it's not been restored. It's on the list. I have a list of stuff that needs to be restored, but the list just grows and grows and grows. <laughs> And this we took out of the farmhouse back when there was no electricity at the farmhouse. It's a water pump. And this is a unique one because it's double piston. So every throw of the handle, you'd be pumping water. Okay. I poured the island, and then I decided to make the runway out of cobblestone. So I was really, really lucky. A friend of mine had a bunch of cobblestones he pulled out of the ground. So I made the cobblestone driveway, which isn't quite done yet. I want to extend it out to here, but everything takes time. And again, I'm watching this now. <laughs> and uh, the little bulldozer, the struck bulldozer that I picked up at one of the engine shows. I'm very fortunate where I live. They have a, a good engine show every year. And it, you find all kinds of really unique stuff here. I mean, it's really exaggerated toy, but... It's fun to drive. And again, I'm into Coke machines, Coke coolers, and a little bad Pepsi machine here. Uh, actually, Coca Cola is my favorite, but Pepsi has a place too. 
the going on is all rough cut lumber sawn from a local local sawmill here and these people are really really nice I built this during the pandemic and you couldn't get wood so they were very kind they cut whatever they cut what I wanted so I put it together again I made a cobblestone walkway I have some nice antique signs and I have more to put up and again it's just a matter of time and picking stuff up and I was very fortunate uh, a week or so ago I managed to find some really old gas station signs and I'm going to put them up on the front of the building when I finish the front and like I say when I finish it and uh, I have a inside here I have a passion for old automobile sun equipment some of it dates back to the 1920s the newest stuff is probably 1950s so it's actually engine analyzers made by the Sun Company, correct? Yes. Um, one has an oscilloscope that you could actually see what the spark plug was doing by the lines that go up and down. And then, of course, they have a tack, uh, a dual meter, which you don't use anymore, and vacuum systems that would measure your vacuum so that you could tell how good the engine was running by the amount of vacuum you had. Uh, this is an earlier one, probably from the 40s. It did not have a, a oscilloscopes back then. Um, believe it or not, this, this has everything you need, a timing light, everything. And uh, these were nice finds. I have a very vintage Snap-on toolbox. It's almost paid off, I heard. Yeah, it's almost paid off. Uh, it, you know, I'm real proud of it because Snap-on now, you have to own a bank to buy one. So I was very lucky to get this for free. And going on this wall here, I like oil cans. If you see like a small section there, then we slowly go around the room, but then there's another analyzer that's a little more modern. This one actually works. I had the high school kids up here, and we hooked it up to an antique car, and they were just amazed to see. And you could measure the dwell, and you could measure the RPMs. So it was kind of cool. Again, this one has a built-in timing light which doesn't exist anymore no one uses them and over here is a 1920s tire spreader back in the old days they used to repair tires a lot because they had tubes in them and they were notorious for going flat so you would take it all apart spread the tire open with this machine pass the tube patch the tire and put it all back together and I actually used that machine a lot when I worked at Meteor and Leisure because I'm old too. And in the olden days, you wouldn't replace spark plugs, you would clean them. Okay, it's actually a, a mini sandblaster. And when you were done blasting it, you'd put the spark plug in here. There's a window you would look. And you plug it in, you push the button, and you'd see the spark jump across the spark plug, which was kind of neat. Again, nobody cleans spark plugs anymore. And then for the oil can collection, I have a scan around. You can see this is just a portion of what I have for oil can collection. And I've been very lucky. Uh, one of the pot stores that I did business with for 20 or 30 years went out of business, and they end up giving me a lot of their old stuff, which is kind of neat. Not that I'll ever use it, but it's some really neat stuff here. You know, nobody replaces few. You know. Well, this is the analog com parts yeah. computer. Yeah, that's the parts computer right there, <laughs> which is kind of neat. And then, of course, in my younger days, I was in the towing business. I've always had a love of tow trucks, and one of the ones I restored, unfortunately, I've met be neglected for a long time is this old Ford and uh, it was actually cable driven and this is before the wheel lifts got fancy it was a uh, mechanical wheel lift that you picked the cars up with so those are homes homes what? 480s 480s twin boom twin line they swing out twin winch right twin winch Oh, well, you got a stinger on this one, too. Yes, that's the wheel lift. Back in the olden days, that was one of the first wheel lifts. So that's all mechanical, right? All no mechanical, hydraulic. No hydraulic. 
and I was fortunate enough to keep this one. I've had this truck for probably 40 years. Wow. Um, it runs and drives, but I have a problem with the clutch. This one's four wheel drive, right? It's four wheel drive. But actually, this is antiquated. There's not much you can do with it anymore except a winch. Oh, and dolly wheels, which don't exist anymore either. But they would use these in a car with both axles messed up. Put one axle in here so they wouldn't be dragging on the ground, and then of course the front of the car picks up on the sling. So unfortunately, when I started getting a lot of the antique tractors and stuff given to me, I had to have a way to transport it. So I was very fortunate. I found this older car carrier sitting in a guy's house, and unfortunately he was restoring it, but he died. So it took it took a lot of it took a lot of please sell it to me from the, the widow and I told her what I was going to do with it and it would be just antique cars and she said okay you can have it or you know obviously I paid for it and uh, so I ended up with it I went all through it all new brakes new pistons uh, did the interior Chevrolet it's a Chevrolet with a 454 what year is it 1984 and it runs really good. It's you know, it's compared to the modern stuff, it's okay. But it's mine, and I use it all. You know, whenever I go pick up antique stuff, which is seems to be falling out of the sky right now. <laughs> but it, it, it's a good truck. Uh, eventually, I'll put the train out here, and maybe on another uh, video, we'll, we'll show you the train room and the amusement park ride that I want to put around. The building. Unfortunately, I, I have enough land to do it. So, all the kids at the school, when are you gonna put together? When are you gonna put together? It's, it's time. <laughs> it's a lot of time, a lot of effort, but it's fun. And so, if anybody likes this stuff, take you know. I hope you enjoy the view. So, Kurt has a barn full of stuff too. So we may make a second video of that. But. Yes. For now, we'll close this out. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and we'll see you on part two. Bye-bye.